Hi guys and gals, um, you're very welcome to this video on NarcCon. Today is the second part of the Smear Campaign series of podcasts that we're looking into at the moment in relation to the Narcissistic Personality Disorder. And this podcast is going to deal with why the evil smear campaign is essential to the narcissist when they are exiting a relationship. We, we are again taking it from the perspective of the intimate relationship, but this applies to all narcissistic relationships. You will find if a person has been a good source of supply to a narcissist, they go in cycles. They hook the person in with the love bomb. They essentially devalue a person and they will discard if they're not discarded beforehand. And the smear campaign has to come. It can be delayed if they want to get a hoover in in the, the immediate aftermath of the final discard. Or it can come at a later stage. But come, it will. And these are the reasons why it will come. And why it's an essential part of being a narcissist. So let's get into it and I hope some of the reasons resonate. At the end of the podcast, I'm going to show you a book that a subscriber has sent to me, a part of our community. He's actually written this book on narcissism and I'm going to show it to you and see if you would be interested in looking into it further. And there's no monetary benefit for me in doing so. I just want to promote work that our community do in the cause of getting the information out about narcissists. Enough. The first reason the evil smear campaign is essential to a narcissist is in the relationship, the narcissist has their own reality, their truth, so to speak, and they create a fake reality for both themselves and their victim or their target. This reality is the narcissist's reality that their narcissism causes. So in order for them to maintain the reality they've had in the relationship, they will smear your name because it fits into how they are now viewing you and what is their reality. So in order to maintain the reality, you, your name is smeared to all and sundry and their cruel discard is not seen as that by them. It's justified by them because of your perceived treachery and bad behavior. And fitting in with a narcissist's lack of accountability, they lack accountability in all areas. They are never wrong. So they weren't wrong to discard you. And if anyone says to them that perhaps that was a bit harsh, they will then smear your name and give reasons as to why they were justified in leaving you in such a manner. So to maintain a narcissist's sense of reality is one and so that they don't have to be accountable for what they do to you in the discard. It's essential. Two, the public mask um, maintenance is another reason. So if you have gone around telling people the truth of the relationship with the narcissist that you may have gone through an enormous amount of abuse and sometimes even physical abuse sometimes people get more sympathy when they're physically abused the internal psychological emotional and spiritual abuse is not so easy to explain to others um, and is not so evident but if a narcissist, not all narcissists are invested in their public mask maintenance, but this is quite a big reason for those that have a standing in the community or even just have a standing amongst their family or want to turn your family against you so that they can milk and reap the narcissistic supply from your family. Smearing you works well into maintaining their public mask. The third reason I have down for why a narcissist maintains and benefits from an evil smear campaign is that they go into the victim hero role and it is essential for both obtaining attention and embedding 
the new supply if they're grooming someone or if they're ready to jump right into bed with them, so to speak. So essentially, they, by smearing your name, will come off as a victim and will get a lot of attention for all the bad things that you're supposed to have done to them. And remember, this is a reversal of roles. You're the victim, they're the abuser, but they will switch that around. It's always a role reversal. So they will get a lot of attention. And remember, attention is narcissistic supply. So the smear campaign really works well for them getting attention instead of going off as a dignified person who loves and respects the fact that they were in a relationship with you. They're the exact opposite of that. They dramatize, they speak about you in both the negative and the cleverer ones will speak about you in relation to your problems and that you you were beyond their help. They did try, but you were beyond their help. I'm sure this resonates with a lot of people. So again, attention and narcissistic supply is generated from your smear campaign when they present in the victim and the hero role, particularly in the hero role for the new supply, in that they're a genuine, decent person, that they tried their best with you, but you're such a nut job that they couldn't actually help you and they received abuse for trying to. Number four, why this evil smear campaign? You can't be superior to a narcissist. So in order to maintain their sense of superiority, they again use the smear campaign against you to put you down. Now, narcissists will often leave their targets when the target is actually doing really well. And this is something that doesn't come up too often. And one of you guys triggered this in me in a comment. And that's why I'm bringing it up in this video. So thank you for leaving that comment. Sometimes narcissists discard their targets when the target is actually starting a new job, doing really well in their life, getting outside accreditation. And the narcissist is feeling very inferior. And this is not a position a narcissist can be in. Their narcissism immediately jumps into action and tells them, no, 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 no. This reality is not the reality we want to maintain our reality. We must dump this person, hope they lose their job, and we must appear to ourselves and the outside world as being superior. A lot of this can be subconscious, but it's something they've done before and they know the effect the discard will have on you and that's conscious. Number five, narcissists are omnipotent creatures. They feel godlike and they feel they're entitled to punish you for their narcissism, their perceived transgressions that you have perpetuated on them. They believe, and this is their narcissism making them believe, that you came into the relationship just as they did on a falsehood. They actually perceive that you were the one that love bombed them made them promises by future faking and that you're the one that let them down. Their narcissism gets them to believe this and blindsides them to the fact, even though they know that this isn't true, it has to be true in their fake reality. So they block out all genuine facts and reality. And the, their perception is that for your transgressions and when you started to bring in boundaries into the relationship, when basically you were crawling on the floor exhausted after all you'd done to serve the narcissist, you become the enemy because you're asking for something for yourself. And there's a hint of criticism in that to the narcissist. You're saying to the narcissist that you're, they're not looking after you properly, that you're not getting your needs met. And that is criticism to a narcissist. So the narcissist turns it around, takes a godlike holier than thou approach and is going to punish you for your dastardly transgressions. 
That is the craziness of narcissism, guys. They're not seeing reality. Everything is self-referencing. Everything anybody else does is considered either good or bad. There is no gray area. There is no object constancy. You could have stood on your head for two or three years. None of that matters in the moment to the narcissist. The minute they perceive you as going against them, and this can even just be a perception and nothing you actually do, they will have the godlike stance to call judgment on you. And if you complain in the discard about how cruel they're being to you or say, how can you leave me when I'm sick like this? They will justify that in a godlike way by saying, you brought this on yourself. You are deserving of everything that's happening to you at this point in time. And how dare you criticize me? You must look in the mirror at yourself. Crazy. Number six, in relation to the evil smear campaign, this is essential for narcissists to do, is they see you suffering. And if you're suffering, they're not suffering. It's like a transference of suffering onto you where they obtain a sadistic sadistic pleasure from your suffering because it elevates them into a position where they're not. So it's literally transferring how they really feel in general, a lack of joy. And another comment somebody said, somebody left, which was brilliant um, about narcissists being joy suckers. I just have to get that in there. But yes, joy suckers, they are. So if they can transfer that bad mood, that negativity, that hate, rage and jealousy and envy onto your, you, seeing you in pain, that gives them a great deal of satisfaction. Number seven, why the smear campaign? If they can... By blackening your name, if they can put you, the perception of you, in a bad position, they can use that PR, that propaganda with various different agencies, law enforcement included, or friends and neighbours and family to agree with that opinion and give them little bits of evidence based on truth, but totally twisted, that you're the bad one, they can gain custody of their children. They can take your property and your money. They can actually get you locked up if people believe it well enough and if law enforcement officers believe it also. So remember, they've been building a picture so that they're protected from you. They've used the information you gave them initially in the relationship and they've been smearing you in a very subtle way throughout the relationship so that when they come to do the big smear on you, it's believable because they've been building into it in the perception and reality change of people's minds that are going to have an influence on whatever agenda they came into the relationship for or whatever they want to get from you. This has been slowly building. Number eight, they can smear your name so that this is kind of building into the last point so that they can actually stay out of jail. So they can justify something that may have happened so that they can say that you're the abuser and not them. And there's a case coming up maybe where you filed police reports they will also even fake injuries and say to the police that you have been injuring them. And in a court of law, this is really hard to prove unless you have very well documented evidence. Very hard for any judge or barrister or lawyer to prove that there wasn't two sides to the story and two people arguing and fighting and abusing where the truth is there was one. And this is like, you know, the the analogy of 
the two mothers bringing up the baby to King, is it King Solomon or King David? Please correct me in the comments. And both claiming the baby's theirs. And the king says he will cut the baby in half. Do they both agree? And the real mother says no, because she loves her child and wants to preserve the child's life. This is a tricky situation where there is one truth and one liar but because the liar is saying that the other person is the abuser, it gets very complicated and hard to prove. Another distortion of reality on the narcissist's part. So the evil smear campaign can sometimes be to prevent them from going to jail, to confuse the situation. Number nine, and we're nearly getting to the end here, guys, and I will show you that book then. Number nine is... It harps back to the sadistic pleasure a narcissist gets in putting another person down. But seeing the effect, the huge effect that the smear campaign is having both on you and other people and all this kind of sympathy and attention and everything that goes along with their creation of this smear campaign makes them feel very relevant. And it gives them huge dopamine hits, huge pleasure, hormonal spikes, fuels them up on narcissistic supply. They are the center of attention and they have created this, triggered this in so many people. And so many people are focused on them. And that essentially, that energy and emotional output and attention is the ingredients for a narcissistic supply chocolate cake. The very last and most important reason that the narcissist perpetuates an evil smear campaign on the target or victim that they are leaving is for their very existence. If, and that feeds into the last point, the existence of the false persona. If this person can cause you so much pain and can cause everybody to believe that this is true, then the false and fake persona itself must be true because people are believing that this person that is presented to the world exists and that this person is telling the truth and that this person is exactly who they say they are. It enables them to actually believe it themselves become more empowered and add even more character traits onto the false mask to really solidify in people's minds that this character exists. So guys, they are the benefits of the smear campaign to the narcissist and they're also the reasons that they essentially have to do the smear campaign to maintain their false reality and their fake mask and persona. And now we will get on to the book that a kind subscriber has sent me and a member of our community. And he is an Irish guy and his name is Mike Flannery and he is also an artist. And I'm going to leave in the video um, contact details for Mike if anyone wants to purchase the book. I'm not sorry, I'm not sure what price it is. But this is the book itself. I hope it comes out. It doesn't have the mirror reflection. It's called To Grin and Bear. There's some fantastic illustrations in the book. And it's basically a really good guide for anyone who wants to know the ins and outs of narcissism and the terminology that's used and things explained in a kind of a very precise way um, in relation to narcissism. Like there's one section here, flying monkeys and enablers. And I'll just give you a little look at the picture there. And um, the pictures are amazing. I love particularly the one about future faking. And then there's a whole page on what flying monkeys and enablers are. So it's a concise information guide on the narcissistic personality disorder. Thank you, Mike, for sending it. And yeah, that's there. So check out the details in the description. Thank you as always for being here and I will see you again shortly.
Take great care of yourselves.